Hey, this is Rusty uh, with video number three of four uh, on the 2000 uh, BMW E38 740IL changing the blower motor. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, like the channel and subscribe if it's good for you. Thanks. Okay, so here is what the new one looked like when I took it out of the box. And I was thinking, oh, they sent me the wrong thing. But I believe this plastic is just a... Um, part of it for shipping. This is the old one. But I'm holding on part of the resistor. And it's a strap that goes all the way around. So it looks like that'll be good. So I'm going to take um, this part of the strap mounting Take those two screws out right there. And then I'll put it on the new one and we'll make sure it looks good. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so this is the new motor with the new resistor. Just kind of sitting here. And it slides onto these um, this piece right here is fixed to the motor. This is part of the resistor, <clears throat> excuse me, in the rubber grommets right here are affixed to this. And I get to turn around. So you put the screws in from this side which holds the resistor on. Um, now, one thing that I noticed, let's see if I can get a shot of it. If you look in that hole, you'll notice there are no threads. So, when you're putting these screws in, um, you're basically making your own threads. So, you try to line it up as best you can and just tighten it down. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay. According to the old one, the red goes on the left, if I'm looking at it this way, and the blue goes on the right. So I will make the connections um, and get it back together. Um, screws cut in fine. Is easy to do. I did it with just a, a ratchet in my hand. So, and then this comes with new screws. You can see um, that holds this into the housing. So, uh, we will plug these connectors in and then head out to the car and see about getting it reinstalled. Well, here, <clears throat> excuse me. Here's another downside to not having a garage. The car is in full sun. Um, I do have a maple tree that it's almost under uh, when I started this project yesterday <clears throat> excuse me um, I backed the car to where it was in the shade um, earlier in the day today than it was yesterday so the car is not quite in the shade yet the front part of it is so it'll be warm um, but you know what are you gonna do that's how it works out when you don't have a garage and you work outside okay so we've run into a little bit of an issue um, when we were putting this resistor on, we noticed that the clearance between, let's see if you can see this, point this out. So the clearance between the end of the resistor and the fan is not a lot. You can see the gap there. On this side, it's quite a bit of a gap. So we were worried, pretty big gap, pretty small gap. So we were worried that the fan might come in contact with the resistor, but we figured, well, if it runs true and straight and everything's you know solid and secure, that's plenty of room. What we weren't thinking about is, and you can see it, see the amount of the shaft protruding from the uh, fan cage? 
okay. this side, almost none. So the issue is when we put this motor into the housing, this side of the fan rubs on the housing. Not much, but enough. We don't know um, if after a while it will, um, you know, cause a problem with the motor um, or if it will just eventually wear maybe the plastic down enough to where it won't rub at all, which would be okay. But the rubbing may make a noise, you know, which could be irritating. Um, it also could put undue wear on maybe the bearing side of the motor. I don't know. You can kind of see them through the slats in the uh, squirrel cage or fan cage, whatever you want to call it. So we're not sure. So at this point, we can um, take it back apart, put it in a box, send it back to where we purchased it and see if they'll send us another one. Or we can try to push the squirrel cage onto the shaft a little bit more, which is what I believe we're going to do. We're in a little bit of a time constraint as far as um, we work a normal nine to five job. Um, you know, sometimes you don't have time during the week and could do it on the weekend, but then the car is out of commission. So um, at this point, I think that's what we're going to do. See how difficult it's going to be to push this further onto the shaft um, without damaging the motor or the cage uh, or the bearings um, that it rides on and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we'll check back. Okay, we were successful in getting the squirrel cage, fan cage, slid down on the shaft a little closer towards the motor, which made the gap between the end of the fan cage and the uh, blower housing a little bit greater and it does not rub now. So we have this piece of uh, cast iron, I guess it is, came from a press. <clears throat> Uh, a plug, I forget what this came off of. Was it used? Oh, maybe it was a header. I think that's what it was. The, um, um, for the oxygen sensor to plug up if you didn't want to use an oxygen sensor. So set, we sat that like that. Stood the uh, fan motor on its end and the shaft rested on this and the cage uh, was close to that but not quite touching it. And then we put this uh, 10 millimeter socket over the end of the um, cage where it goes over the shaft. This 10 millimeter opening is large enough to go over the shaft, but uh, basically the perfect size to contact around um, the opening in the cage. And then we just tapped it very lightly a couple times with a hammer uh, and it did slide down. We didn't move it much. Um, I don't know. Um, a little more than a sixteenth of an inch. A couple millimeters. Something like that. Um, and then we took it back to the car and checked for fitment. So as you can see, the uh, new fan motor and the blower resistor, blower motor, blower resistor, um, is mounted into the housing. Well, we got that rubbing. Spins freely. Doesn't make any noise. <clears throat> Had a couple scare or two. When we were putting this in, we tightened the top uh, bolt screw in maybe halfway <clears throat> and checked for play and it was rubbing and thought, oh great. We got to looking in the bottom screws were not it wasn't seated where it needed to be so we backed the top one back out repositioned everything um, and it still seemed like it wanted to drag a little bit um, but it turns out that it just wasn't seated correctly once we got everything lined up like it was supposed to with the openings and got all three screws you know started basically halfway through and then uh, check for the spinning and it was fine and tighten them down and it's fine so looks like everything is going as hoped 
And the next thing would be to put the cover over this um, and then put the wire through the cover. Cover has an opening. <clears throat> so you have to put the cover on. Oh, it's actually upside down. put the cover on <clears throat> get it secured and then plug the wire through the opening and there's a little know if you can see that there's a little bitty um, place to anchor the wiring uh, harness uh, with a small zip tie uh, we believe we have some and but that was a little bit difficult to get the zip tie cut to start with much less putting it back on so we will see how that works out okay not sure if you're supposed to do this well first off let me show you that I even um, put the little cable tie, tie on there to hold the uh, electrical wires for the blower um, out, of the way, out of the way. Um, so the next thing I did was um, put the key in, turned it, uh, hooked the battery back up, negative, put the key in, turned it on, which I'm not sure you're supposed to do with all this stuff disconnected. Um, but the blower last position was I think wide open um, and when everything came on it started blowing so yay you know you w without testing you can't be a hundred percent sure it's a bad blower motor or a bad blower resistor um, change them both it works so everything should be good going back now the next issue hold on okay so the next issue is I still got the two little arms to put on for the valve diverters um, the vent flaps or whatever you want to call them but the next really issue um, putting the dash back in is relatively easy you just slide it in there basically and bolt it back up the problem is all these foam pieces um, they are glued down somewhat you can see the remnants of the glue right there um, so this there's still a little bit that's connected but a lot of it that's not this piece right here is completely not connected, but this foam is kind of old. It's sticky to the touch. Um, and whereas this foam, I guess this would be more like what they would call closed cell foam or whatever, it's really tight. You know, it comes back a lot real fast. This foam, it's kind of hard maybe to tell for that, but it doesn't return to its shape that well because it's old. But it looks like all these foam pieces kind of help um, especially these guys it looks like it might help seal uh, any gaps that are between um, you know all the vent openings you can see the little indentations there where that one was and the same for this one um, some of these other pieces might be for rattles I'm not sure I don't even know where this piece goes um, I couldn't it's only on the passenger side um, so not 100% sure there um, same way with this one you know, it's attached here, but not on this side. Um, so the problem is when you try to put this dash back in, you kind of have to slide it and wiggle it and all that other stuff. And, you know, if the foam doesn't stay attached to the underside of the dash, then it won't do its job of sealing. Um, so I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I do have some loctite uh, spray adhesive that I'm going to try um, you know just shake it up spray it on there let it sit for a little bit um, this piece seems to be in pretty good shape like I say this one's loose this one's completely off I just has a groove where it's been so I just have it sitting where it has been it looks like you can see this piece right here never really did even from the factory doesn't look like it sealed up well yeah, you can see right there where it just it didn't get and it's hard you know I don't know if they put this stuff in with the windshield not in place which would probably be easier you could kind of just more or less set it down on it um, there are these three spiked pieces uh, the other one's right up in here you can't really you can barely see the end of it and then one over there on that end um, 
slide into three um, receptacles on the dash uh, right underneath the windshield. So it does have to slide a little bit. Um, you can't really just kind of set it on there because of the way the steering wheel is and so on and so on. So what we're gonna do is try to peel this stuff back somewhat, Let's put this spray adhesive stuff on there, let that sit for a little bit and then do the best we can to get it back into um, get this top part cover dash cover on top of the dash itself and see how that goes so another challenge there's always challenges when you're doing something like this especially when a car that's 22 years old I will update you later okay the next thing to do is to get this arm well, if I can get the camera over there um, back into that connector um, like I was showing you previously it's just a little tab slide in should be able to just pop in there easy and then we got the next one so that's a two-handed job putting the camera down okay that was easy enough I just had to push on like where the yellow dots are I can't hardly see that one but it has a little yellow dot on the top of it also so you just have to push uh, right on the other side of that or right before you get to that on the arm and it just popped right into place This next one's gonna be a little bit more tricky. I think because this side has to go down into uh, The hole it's got a uh, It's kind of hard to get focused Yeah, you can see it's got a little It's flat and it's got a little click edge on it. So hopefully that will line up. Okay This side should be a lot easier. Um, it just has a little white um, receptacle type thing it slides into, kind of clicks in or whatever. So that should be easy enough, but we will see. Well, pleasantly surprised that one clicked in just very easily. It turns out there's three tabs, kind of like a tri-point star uh, orientation on the socket and the little tab sticking down had the same. This side, you can see the little white receptacle it clicked in. So both of those were very easy. I uh, feel very lucky um, that that happened. So um, I just got to put the cover uh, vent piece that actually goes between these two vents and then put the dash cover on. Um, that is going to be the tricky part. And it's just the foam. If it wasn't for the foam, it should slide right up there and be no big deal. Um, this little insert piece on the driver's side is missing. I'm going to, we're going to look and see if we can find that. Um, if not, then, you know, it just needs a little bit of slack it'll have. That just kind of takes up some space and gives it a little a wear surface. But I sprayed um, the foam and the backside of the underside of the dash with that spray adhesive and um, I don't know how long you're supposed to wait, but we are given a little bit of time to kind of set while we're doing this and hopefully um, we can get the dash cover top, whatever you want to call it, slid back on and connected back on and the foam hopefully 100% in place, but you know, I, I don't know. It was a little, it pulled, you know, taking it out. So logic says it would have to pull or be pushed when you're trying to get it back into place. So all we can do is try and see how that works out. Okay. So I believe I have the dash cover top put on. It's just sitting there right now. It's not bolted up. Uh, one thing that we did do is um, we put the negative battery cable on, closed the driver door, put the key in the ignition and pushed the uh, steering wheel control all the way down and then removed the battery cable so we would have more room um, up here which I believe made getting the dash in easier um, the biggest thing was should make the speedometer cluster the instrument cluster easier to get back in uh, we did struggle with that taking it out so um, I believe all the electrical connections are made there's really not that many I mean you've got these two our three that go to the uh, instrument cluster. There's one connector on the back of this one, 
one connector on the back of this one and then there are you can kind of see them uh, let's see. Nope. can't really get the camera in there right there uh, but there's three connectors um, guessing it does with the, the alarm LED and this is an LED LED um, and this is hot and cold but I believe it's just a these are actually the flaps you can see but this guy I believe is an electronic uh, position so as far as I know that's all the we all know that's all the connectors for the dash so the next step would be to um, bolt it back down screws and bolts uh, the foam would uh, appears you can see it right here that's the main piece that uh, this is the the ductwork that goes over to that vent the two right there um, and the same thing on the passenger side there so the most critical foam I mean this these guys foam right here you can see I think might be just sound deadening or Maybe to try to help with rattles, which, you know, obviously can be a nuisance. You know, your dash is rattling, can't do anything about it. But the critical, I think, would be that foam right there because um, it's sealing that gap between the ductwork and the... Um, I don't know if you can see it. Not really. But the air that blows out. So that would be the most critical, and it appears to be still in place like it's supposed to be. I will take you over to the passenger side. Okay, here's the passenger side foam. It appears to be in place. Um, you can't really see all the way back, um, but it doesn't look like it slid out, which was the main key. Um, and the dash was easier to get back in than I had anticipated. Um, I don't know if having the wheel down made some difference that we were able to, we tried to keep it you know, tilted this way as far as we could so we wouldn't drag the foam across all the um, uneven or regular surfaces, uh, getting, you know, across all the vents and wires and supports and all that stuff. So hopefully everything's good. Um, we did put the, I'm not sure if I told you this, we did put the key in and turn it on. It was on high and it blew like it was supposed to. So. Either the blower motor or the resistor or both were defective is why we did all this to start with. So everything looks to be going like it's supposed to. So we will bolt everything back up and um, as far as the dash and then we will um, break back in and show you uh, what pieces we're doing next. Okay, so we put in these two bolts, 13 millimeter, this one and this one. Um, I think it's a T25 Torx for that. Um, one, two, three, four, uh, three millimeter Allen uh, bolts. And on the driver's side, you can see that uh, T25 Torx. And this side, the uh, passenger side, has two of these bolts for the dash and one in the back. Uh, the driver's side only has one. But that, uh, yeah, those are the bolts that hold, um, that hold the dash in place. So the next thing that we're gonna do is put in the uh, instrument cluster, speedometer cluster. And we'll do that and then we'll, and it should be a lot easier to put it back in since we lowered the steering wheel down. But it's just those three connectors on the back and we'll show you those uh, as we put those on because they're kind of weird the way they slide in and then uh, the retaining strap or hoop or lever um, kind of slides into a groove and clicks into place and that holds everything together. 
Okay, so uh, we'll have to give BMW some credit here. The Sometimes I think these guys are so smart, you know, how did they ever come up with that idea? And sometimes I think, what were they thinking? Um, but this is an uh, example of a good idea. So you got a white connector, blue connector, and a black connector. And then, you know, black, white, and blue. So they slide in there, and then the um, bar that connects them in uh, rotates in, and it is easier to uh, get the col uh, cluster back in with the wheel all the way down, but I need two hands. So let me get the cluster positioned and then I will show you how this connector slides on. Okay, instrument cluster is in. Was 10 times easier with the steering wheel all the way down. Uh, interesting, a little bug or something, cobweb <laughs> flying over there. Cool. Uh, so there's just those two little screws. That one, you can't really see this other one. Yeah, there it is, that one. And I think they are a 10 millimeter Torx because the lowest I have is, well, I actually have a 10 millimeter, but it's missing out of the case. So I've had it for 29 years or whatever. Um, but I have, um, uh, a T15 and it's a little too big so I ended up using just a uh, little like um, watch screwdriver stuck in there and it's, it has a little knurls or whatever on it so you can grip it and then just turn it with a pair of pliers uh, it doesn't have to be tied it's just to keep the instrument cluster in it just kind of sits there so as uh, far as I know that's all good uh, we at this point may take a break um, I know it, um, there's been segments and I'll, we'll make sure all these go together the way we had to film it. Um, when you're by yourself, you know, that's the best you can do. Um, but it's hot out here and, uh, but we're on the downside. Um, we just have to put the emergency brake handle back on the cable, put a couple of screws in for this guy, for this little tab here. Do the panel underneath, but you can't really see. Um, put the glove box in, the airbag, and the radio. Sounds like a lot, but actually it's not too bad. Oh, yeah. The, probably the next thing I'll do will be the side pillar airbag covers. Uh, but we'll, we're going to take a break and get something to drink, and we will be back.